What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're having a crawfish bowl here at the house. So I'm going to bring y'all along, show y'all how I do it. Now before we get started, if y'all are enjoying the content that I've been putting out, make sure to smash that like button. Also, if you would please consider subscribing to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. And make sure you got that notification bell clicked too so you don't miss any of the awesome content we got coming down the pike. Y'all stay tuned. Let's show y'all how I do it. Now, first off, for starters, I do not use salt to purge mine. I just stick them down in a cooler, hook a hose down on the bottom, run some fresh water up through them, let it run through. Kind of, kind of stick my hand in here, stir them around, get that water good and stir it up so I can get a lot of that old nasty brown stuff out of there. We'll let it run through. I'll dump it a couple times till that water's completely clear till we get all that nasty inside of there. Y'all hang around for a little bit. We're gonna get these couple sacks rinsed. Gonna get them thrown in the pot, get them cooked up. All right, y'all, we got those crawfish around there rinsing out. I done stirred them around a couple times, dumped them a couple times, and I'm letting them, letting them fill back up and letting them drain some more. We're gonna go on ahead and get some water in this pot and get it to boiling. Now everybody's pot's gonna be different. Mine is 80 quart size, so I mean, it's gonna take roughly six or seven inches of water to be able to cover all the crawfish that we're going in. Is this in a bowl, a, a full 40 pound sack all at one time. So six or seven inches, that means we're gonna go roughly to right there in between about that fifth or sixth hole right there inside the strainer. Y'all right, to look past my loud family. They, you know, they don't care they're making a video. They're gonna be loud anyways. <laughs> but this pot right here is supposed to get really, really loud and drown them all out and might drown me out too. So I hope y'all can still hear me. Let's get this thing fired up, get this water up to a bowl so we can add the seasonings in. She'll go. All right, and then we're gonna let it go like that for a couple minutes, let the water get warmed up a little bit, and then we're gonna go to start adding the seasonings and uh, some of the aromatics like the oranges, lemons, and whatnot. I right, know this first batch I'm doing, it's gonna be without too much spice in it. It's just gonna be fixings and shrimp. I'm gonna save the crawfish for uh, for the second round of stuff I do. They're gonna have just a little bit of a jacked up heat level, but we're gonna do, like I said, the fixings and the shrimp with a little bit less spice for the kids and everybody else that doesn't want anything too spicy. Now we go ahead and say the thing about crawfish bowls, everybody's got their own little variation, everything they do a little bit different. So I mean, you may see something I'm doing here that may be different than the way you do it, but everybody's got their own things they like, their own, uh, I mean, they're all different ratios of the amounts of stuff that they like in it. So just, uh, just do what you like. Put the amounts of stuff you like in it. Put what you like in it. As long as you do that, hey, you're going to have a good time. It's going to be good eating. All right, so water's getting warming on up now. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take... Put a half a bag of Louisiana crawfish ball. We'll add this. We're gonna get it up to uh, all the way, the rest of the way up to a rolling ball. Then we're gonna go start adding the big ones in. I know you'll take my little homemade paddle. I had to make this one because probably about a month or so ago, I locked my keys in my truck. I used my panel that I had for doing the crawfish pulls as the wedge for wedging my door open and unlocking the truck door. So, hey, this right here works pretty good though. I don't use it for one bowl already. So we're gonna stir, uh, stir the seasons. We just put it up, bring it the rest of the way back to a rolling bowl. Oh, 
flavor and start getting put off into it. But yeah, we're gonna put like probably four oranges, like four or five lemons in this first uh, batch. I'm gonna save the rest, put a little bit of them in there with the crawfish or anything. You ain't gotta squeeze them because once it gets real good and hot, it's gonna, it's gonna take that seasoning right out of it. It's gonna cook that, uh, that juice right out of the oranges and lemons. Alright, we got a little bit of steam rolling out that little peephole there. So what that means is we up to a rolling bowl now. Let's go ahead and start adding stuff. Oh yeah, y'all check it out. Looking good. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and start off with uh with four little bags of little baby red potatoes. We'll let them go. We're gonna go probably about 10 to 12 minutes or so. Then I'm gonna check them for tenderness to see about how much longer we're lacking. We'll go ahead and get started putting them in. coming right along I still got probably about another probably about another eight to ten minutes or so before they get done but what we are gonna go ahead and do at this point we're gonna go ahead and add some sausages to the potatoes let them get cooked a little bit but yeah we'll use a couple packs of little smokies and a couple packs of connected sausage in ours probably about half of this bowl of the mushrooms to this. I'm gonna save some of them for when we do a spicy batch of crawfish because I want some of these to get that real good spicy kick to them. We're only gonna put about half of them in here with this. Get the top back on, let it get back on. Like I said, we'll check up again here in about five to eight minutes so everything's coming along. All right, y'all, it's been about another eight minutes. The potatoes, they're right on track. They're gonna be good by the time everything else is done. So at this point, we're gonna go on ahead and add the shrimp. We got some big old Royal Reds over here, but my wife likes these little, little small Walmart frozen pre-cooked shrimp. So we're gonna add some of them to it and then add them Royal Reds that we got to it too. Oh yeah, it's gonna be good right there. We're gonna put them in it. We're gonna bring it back to a rolling bowl. Once it gets back to a rolling bowl, we're gonna let them go probably two to three minutes and I'm gonna shut that heat. We're gonna add the frozen corn to it, get it cooling off, let it start soaking up some of that goodness. Gonna get that top back on it, crank that heat back up. Try to bring it back to a bowl as quick as we can. All right, we got our bowl back, so now we're gonna kill the heat. Go ahead and uh, See, now I hear the kids squealing. Cause that thing ain't drumming them out no more. Now we got that heat killed. We gonna go ahead and add our couple bags of frozen corn. I'm actually, I'm gonna do all the corn in this batch with the shrimp and uh, a little bit of fixings we're doing for the kids and everything. So that corn tends to absorb a whole lot of the spice. So I definitely, since the kids are gonna be eating it mainly, definitely want to go ahead and add it to this first batch that don't have a ton of seasoning in it. Once we start the crawfish, I'll be using bags of ice to drop the temperature, and stop the cooking process. But this part's real important with the shrimp, the crawfish too. You got to do something 
whether it be using one of them bowl bosses that goes around the pot that squirts the water on it to cool it down, putting ice in it, putting frozen corn in it. You gotta put something in there. You gotta do something to drop that temperature real quick to stop that cooking process. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bunch of stuff that's way too overdone. But the goal is to drop that temp to about 150 degrees or so. Stop everything from cooking. And let it start soaking up all that good seasoning and all that good juice. Now, I ain't gonna let this stuff soak too long because again, like I said before, this is for the kids. So I don't want it to get too much spice to it probably let it sit there and steep in the juice for probably about five minutes or so then I'll go ahead and pull it let them go and get to eating all right and we've let them steep for probably about five or six minutes we're gonna go ahead and get this stuff pulled so these kids can go ahead and get to eat before we get too much spice saturated into it all right y'all look at all that stuff I think I might snack on some of that while I'm cooking crawfish. All right, now we're gonna get the fire back going. We're actually gonna get some more seasonings added to it. Then we're gonna get that fire back going, get the rest of our vegetables going, and get us a sack of crawfish in there. All right, so now for this next batch of stuff, it's actually gonna have some crawfish in it. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna add a half a bottle of this, uh, this eight ounce Louisiana crawfish concentrate. bag of Louisiana that I used about half of for the first batch of stuff. I'm going to put the other half of it in it now. And just for good measure, we're going to go on ahead and dump this container of Zatarain's Extra Spicy uh, Crawfish Crab and Shrimp Bowl. We're really going to start to kick it up a notch now. I, know, I knew there was something I was forgetting with the first batch of stuff. I didn't put a stick of butter in it. So, time we're gonna get us a stick of butter go ahead and get him on in there and then we're gonna take us a 12 ounce bottle of Louisiana hot sauce we're gonna pop this little plastic seal out make sure it pours faster we're gonna put about a half a bottle of this in here and stuff is ready to add some crawfish we're gonna go in with probably about 35 pounds or so of them right now let's do it and get them back up to a bowl. Get that top back on to help them get back to that bowl quicker. All right, y'all know we've reached the time to kill this bowl and add the bag of ice. Let them go ahead and start steeping. our least spicy batch of crawfish. I'm actually going to do one more batch that's going to have the rest of that bottle of crab bowl in it and uh, another bag of Louisiana. We're going to go ahead and get this bag of ice in these. Get it stirred down, get them cooling off, get that cooking process stopped. We're probably going to let these steep probably about 10 minutes or so. What I'm going to do after they've been steeping for about 10 minutes I'm gonna take one around to the people that have the least spice tolerance, let them taste them, 
and let them let me know whether they want to let them keep on soaking a little bit longer to keep on getting more of that flavor or whether they want to go ahead and pull them at that point. I try my best to accommodate for everybody when I'm doing a bull. Sometimes it don't work out right and I uh, stump my toe and get a little too much seasoning in it and make it too hot too quick. Maybe I didn't do that this time. Show them to y'all. Looking good, looking and smelling good. All right, y'all, we let this batch steep for 10 minutes. Our taste testers say they're good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and pour this batch out, and, uh, get the seasoning in to get that next batch fired up. that first batch of beauty mm -mm -mm. I know we're gonna continue on with the theme of making them a little bit hotter each time we're gonna add one more bag of the Louisiana crawfish bowl get that heat back going get this added to it get it back up to a bowl get us another bag of crawfish in there Probably gonna let this batch sit probably about 30 minutes or so. We really want them to get that seasoning good and soaked up in them. We'll see y'all when it's time to pull them when it's feeding time. All right, y'all, let's see what these things taste like right quick. Let's get one out of here. We're gonna get one out of the spicy cooler. All right, the way I eat them, I know there's a few different methods of peeling them, but what I do, I take a tail and straighten it out. I get a good grasp of hold of the body. I push the tail into the body, twist a little bit. Pull it out. You guys are eating all out. Pinch it. That's it, crawfish down the hatch. And I'll tell y'all what, that thing right there is fire. That thing is awesome. And some folks suck the head, some folks don't. I personally, I will suck the head. I know this thing right here is gonna light me up, so let's do it. Woo! Oh yeah, buddy. Woo! <laughs> that is it's got some heat to it right there, man. <laughs> oh. They good though. I will give them that. I'll, I mean, I'm gonna sit here and torture myself all night with them. I'll, I'll be eating them off and on. So no matter how hot it gets, I'm gonna be lighting myself up, buddy. All right, y'all, that's gonna be a wrap for this one. I hope I didn't get too redundant. I mean, I probably really only needed to show y'all one cook through. I mean, that would have been sufficient because really, I mean, we just repeated the same steps. Uh, on the other times that we showed i'm gonna go on ahead and get this last batch of crawfish cooked and then we're just gonna have us a good old time tonight eating crawfish hanging out listening to music just having a good old time now i hope this video helps somebody out i mean i'm sure there's some stuff that i did that probably wasn't the exact right way to do it but i mean it's the way that we do it and everybody's got their own little tweaks their own different things they do i know some of y'all are gonna have stuff that y'all like that y'all gonna put in it that we don't like that we didn't put in it but hey uh drop down in the comments some of the stuff that y'all like and maybe there's something that I hadn't thought of, maybe something that we hadn't tried that might actually be good. So drop down in the comments below some of the stuff that you guys like in y'all's crawfish bowls. Now, I hope that I did a good job on this video. I mean, I know how to I know how to get out there and fish and film a fishing video, but trying to do a little cooking video, it's not really my forte, not really my thing. Probably would have been better if I would have had a camera in instead of trying to do it with a tripod and trying to juggle everything on my own. But, ah. It is what it is. We'll see how it turns out. But yeah, if y'all enjoyed that video, make sure to smash that like button. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. Make sure y'all got that notification bell clicked. I appreciate y'all watching. Thank y'all for all the support. We'll see y'all next time.